Well, thank you. Um, you know, it, it, it is a um, true statement, old problem. I'm sure hemonumothorax has been going on for as long as there have been any kinds of injury that you can imagine. And I want to introduce a new concept, and I think that this is something that we will see in the future take over and revolutionize the world. And I would say of all the things that I've done, some things have been with a lot of uh, intrepidation and uh, effort in order to push and promote this thing to go forward, but this is going to take a life on its own. So I think that this is going to be something that eventually not only is done in the United States, but also uh, worldwide. So pigtail catheters, 14 French, it's been around for a little bit of a time period, and the question is can we use it in the trauma setting? And when you use it in the trauma setting, I think you'll get it together and also be used in a surgical setting in all sorts of varieties of fields. And we all know what trauma chest tubes are and what the issues are along with chest tubes. And when you put these things in, it's just painful. There's a lot of people that get put this put in, they have broken ribs, and you, know, you, you talk to them the next morning and they say, well, you know, the main thing that hurts is that tube coming out of my chest. So uh, it's an invasive procedure and we all know it, and there's uh, issues associated with it. And the question is, is, is bigger always better? And uh, you know, I'm going to hold reserve before I answer that question. But this is going to be a little bit of a scary uh, uh, video. I get a lot of complaints about this video. Sure. They gave him 100, but you can give him some more, yeah. Give him some more. It's unlikely oh. that if you're in Are you not in yet? Hey, uh, where is a uh, local some more? You gave him 20. Matt. Uh. Fine, sir. Sir, I'm going to give you a little more numbing medicine, sir. It's going to make you feel a lot better. So, you know, uh, residents are putting this in. It doesn't happen all the time like this, but, you know, we have had our remembrances of these types of occasion where pain control is tough to do, and the most important drug, obviously, when you do this is Versed, so they don't remember it more and more than the fact that you can't help the pain. So, you know, does size matter? Of course it matters. Size, of course, and if they, if it, they tell you it doesn't, they're lying to you. So, you know, what we did was we did do an analysis of 28 versus 32, 28 to 32 versus 36 to 40 French chest tubes in trauma, and said, look, sometimes, you know, some guys are putting in small ones, sometimes some guys are putting in big ones, and is there an actual difference based on the size? And when I was in Los Angeles, uh, this is what we did, we, it basically showed that it doesn't matter for blood. Okay, for air, it really doesn't matter, as you know, because it doesn't take much to pull air out. It can, you can have smallest little orifices that air goes in and out of, but for blood, it really doesn't matter. Uh, 30 uh, small ones versus the larger ones. So this is what a kit looks like. This, we, I like to use the Wayne Pneumothorax catheter kit from Cook Company, and there's a variety of different ones out there. I don't like the trocar ones because of the complication rate associated with the trocar one, but this is a Seldinger technique. It's fairly easy to do. Uh, this worked before. Is this video not working as well now? Is it on the same computer that we tested it on? Okay, so it looks like it's not working this time. So anyways, uh, it's, a, it's us showing you how fast and easy it is. And you just, what I do is I use a syringe with lidocaine in it on a needle as I infiltrate, and then when I get into the chest wall cavity, I aspirate, you can see the bubbles coming up, you exchange a needle for a guide wire, and then it's very simple to do. So what we did was we published our two-year data of using pigtail catheters, and they, we basically stated that it was very safe and equally effective when, uh, uh, when compared to chest tube and a traumatic pneumothorax. And I think for uh, most all people, that's fairly intuitive that air will come out of these things very easily. It's not too much of an issue. It's effective for pneumothorax. So when you look at the number of days the tubes are in, the failure rates, the complication rate, basically it was all about the same. 
Now, we did have a learning curve associated with this. We did have a variety of scary complications. As you introduce a new device, they will, the residents will put this into anything you can imagine. And I'll go through with some of those types of stuff. I had a guy put this into the subclavian vein. We opened it up. Blood is pouring out of this thing. And we ended up uh, wondering what's going on because the chest x-ray that we got later on showed it was in the vein. And so we just pulled it out, basically. So this is the catheter, the pigtail catheter. We went anteriorly, second intercostal space. I was watching him do it. I'm not sure how he did it, but we, we got it into the uh, right atrium. And so the blood we pulled out of the right atrium, we just infused it right back into the patient and we pulled the catheter out just as if you, we would if you did a quarters catheter to the subclavian vein as well. The uh, patient had no sequela from this, but this was a scary complication. Um, we stuck them in the livers before, um, lots of uh, different places, as you can imagine. Spleen, but I, I've seen chest tubes, and when we started collecting our data, we saw that the chest tubes going into livers and spleens are also the same number in frequency. Now, when, when I started uh, going around talking about pigtail catheters, I've had a lot of trauma centers, uh, directors, they'll say to me, for trauma, I never put in anything less than a 40 French. And they said, if there's more than 400 cc's out there, put in a second one. And if I don't see a diaphragm, meaning that he didn't pull all the blood out, I put in a second one. <laughs> so the next then question comes out, can this thing pull blood out? So, you know, I started doing, thinking about this about 10 years ago, a good friend of mine, George Velmahos, who was in Los Angeles County, I was his partner, we ran a service together, and he told me, clot doesn't come out of any size hole. Blood will come out of any size hole, but clot doesn't come out of any size hole. So this is an ER thoracotomy, and you'll see us pulling this clot out of the chest. Okay. And for anybody who's really done chest tube, I mean thoracotomies for bleeding, there's always this jello clot that's in there. And that clot doesn't come out of 40 French chest tubes, 36 French chest tubes, 32 French chest tubes. It doesn't come out. You're going to have to deal with vats. You know, in the, when I was a fellow, we used to just basically go to the OR. We didn't have thoracoscopes. We used proctoscopes, and we just suck out the clot is all we, all we really did. But, you know, when you do put in a small chest tube, we know that it's all related, to, flow is related to the radius to the fourth power and all of that kind of stuff. And if you do experiments with silastic catheters and, uh, and, and, and try to determine exactly the flow amount, there's no doubt that for a 28 French chest tube, you know, it takes 35 seconds to pull out a liter, whereas for a 14 French chest tube, it takes six and a half minutes. So depending on the scenario and situation, it is slower, and if you need it for some reason to pull it out immediately, then of course a bigger tube would help. But we're also finding that really doesn't make a difference, even if it's slower. You know, so you're going to have to take some risks at some point and think about stuff like the fact that in pediatric trauma or in pediatrics in general, when you have to transfuse a child, they do it through a 25-gauge IV. You know, a red cell is a, just seven microns big. It, it'll go through at any size. Uh, uh, orifice that you can imagine. It just takes a little bit longer. So can it aspirate out from that small sizes as well? Yes, it just takes a little longer. And this has been shown in pediatrics uh, or with multiple papers showing that pigtails work. In this, cath in this uh, particular study, the group in San Diego, what they did was they used, they showed their, their experience with, uh, with pigtails, but this was not put in by surgeons. This was put in by interventional radiologists, you know, much, much later on. So it's not like we're really looking at acute hemothorax with fresh clotting blood. So uh, that's why we went ahead and did this in our trauma patients. Okay, so, you know, does, does flow of blood make a difference? You know, we all know that size matters, right? So we looked at this and put it in, uh, uh, in trauma patients and basically, what we were able to show, that blood drains no matter what size the tube is, and clotted bl uh, blood won't. So 14 French chest tubes, it was, this was a prospective trial. The first one was a retrospective trial on our experience with pneumothorax. This is a prospective trial looking at uh, hemothorax. We compared it to chest tubes where there was some overlap in the data. Uh, most of it was the overlapped, and the outcome that we're looking at is how much comes out of these tubes, how long the chest uh, tube is in place, 
And then the complications and failure rate. And failure rate was uh, uh, defined as uh, whether you needed a second tube or whether you needed the VATS procedure in order to pull out the clot. And you know, when you look at the characteristics, they're all about the same type of people all around. Uh, but what we were able to show is that the initial chest tube output, whether it was a pigtail or with a chest tube, was equivalent. There was actually more, but it was, you know, it was not significant. But so it was about the same amount of blood would come out of that. And we knew this because when we were putting it in just for pneumothorax on patients without a hemothorax, we would find a lot of blood came out of these things. And then you start learning, hey, you know what? This thing probably still works pretty well. And that's why we went ahead and, and looked at it a little bit more scientifically with careful data to see that uh, we're not going to get into trouble. The failure rate was the same uh, statistically, but I'm sure if you had the right number of patients a little bit more, or we did this longer, this would be show that the, the failure rate was actually less with pigtail. It was 24% in chest tubes versus 8% in the pigtail. Uh, second tube was also a little bit less. So if you look at our data from this particular study, this Kluva Tanyu, 14 French versus 32 for 40, 28, 34, uh, 28 to 32, and then 36 to 40, basically the initial output, which is about four to 500 cc's, we actually had the highest output from the pigtails. Um, I, I don't think I'm trying to say that it pulls out more blood, it's just that it doesn't, you know, it's really not gonna be much less than the chest tube. It seems to be about the same as the chest tubes. So here's a guy, uh, ATV accident, uh, comes in with a hemothorax on one side, uh, put a pigtail in, and this is an example of a complication where uh, we were having some problems with the peak pressures, we weren't sure, they didn't have time to get a chest x-ray in, in the operating room while they were doing the laparotomy, so they put in a chest tube on the guy, and then afterwards it looked like this. It, wasn't, it didn't really help or change anything, but it was technically a complication because we needed a second tube. Another patient, Dunshaw wound to the left thorax, thoracic abdominal region, and it, you know we put in a pigtail like this, and at the end you could see that it is a retained clot on the left side. So uh, we put in the chest tube, and nothing came out of the chest tube. So the patient underwent a uh, CT scan and a VATS procedure. But these are examples of our complications. This is a patient uh, with a left hemothorax, as you can see here, with a retained clot on the CT scan. Uh, put in a pigtail, didn't really make a difference. It got 600 cc's out, but we weren't satisfied, so it still went on and got a VATS. So that's the kind of complications that we've been having recently. The, the, the numbers of times that we're sticking this into so subclavian vein or liver or spleen has uh, dramatically stopped as the residents have now learned to do this. Uh, I think Dan Judkins is in the audience. I did this to him <laughs> when he had an effusion as well. And if you want to know uh, about the pain difference, you're welcome to ask him uh, as well. Um, you know, this uh, basic basically shows that the, the complications are about the same. I don't think I need to necessarily go into too much detail about this. Uh, this is all in there, but uh, shows that uh, there's not too much of an issue. Again, uh, is 14 French too small? The answer is basically no. So far, I mean, the next step would be to go even further and go to a 10, but I don't think there's much benefit from going to a 14 to a 10 because the pain benefit isn't really there. It's about the same. So the next step was a prospective randomized trial. We did a retrospective prospective. Now we're doing a prospective randomized trial. And we're going to show the absolute obvious, but you know the reviewers were still insisted upon this to say, what is the advantage? Well, I mean, it seemed very intuitive what the advantage was, that a little tube being stuck into your chest hurts less. And so when we looked at our data, basically this is a representation and shows that, yes, it does hurt less. You need less narcotics, and you get uh, a much more satisfaction and relief. The failure rate was about the same between chest tubes. Uh, complication rate was the same. Uh, number of tube days was very similar, and hospital length of stay was about the same. So, you know, things that affect flow, liquid blood will flow out of any size hole, but uh, the number of holes, we are also inventing this pigtail, so it doesn't just go forward, but actually goes to the side, so it can be pulled up all the way up against the chest wall and don't have this thing pushing against the lung. But I don't, th I don't know if it's going to make that much of a difference. Uh, but we shall see, uh, because we've been working on it for like three years trying to get it through the FDA process, but it's just a very lengthy process. Th there's a lot of things we can do with the chest tube management. Um, you know, we, we can impregnate these things with some antibiotics. We can leach out uh, uh, pain medications through it. You can even leach out narcotics through it if you want. 
It's now being made so that you can see it on uh, ultrasound, so you can follow it and do it with guidance. Uh, the collection system with the Plorvac, we're reinventing that entire system because that's the most arcade, ridiculous thing you can imagine. But uh, you know, you should be able to have a double A AA battery, provide a little bit of suction on that thing, and become completely portable, so you don't have it up to the, you know, to the wall suction. And then those, all of those things are going to be done in the next couple of years. So here's a 68-year-old male hit the table outside hospital a day later, transferred to you with a hemothorax. Uh, you put in a chest tube, uh, we put in a pigtail on this guy. Now what we also do is we transfuse all the blood that we get out of this going back into the patient. We just add CPD, which is uh, citrate, phosphorus, and dextrose, and you know, you're able to give that right back. So again, unclotted blood will drain out of 14 French pigtails. Clotted blood will not drain out of the bigger tubes. In the beginning, it took a lot of resistance from our residents to start doing this. Uh, then our attendings, every single time they heard about a complication, we were just being roasted in our M&Ms, taking us to the hospital, you know, QRC committees, saying, what in the world are you doing? And nowadays, you can't get a resident to put in the chest tube. Now, there are some issues because the ER residents and our residents are uh, graduating with very, very small numbers of open chest tubes, but, you know, <laughs> that's, that's what you get for uh, technological development, you know. When we used to do open colies all the time and we went laparoscopic, it was better for the patient. So that's just the bottom line. Uh, looks like this video is not working either, huh? Yeah. Before when we did it, uh, all the ones that were working weren't working and it was reversed. So this was just an example of how to put these things in. But basically, size matters. Um, not too big, not too small. You just want the right size. Thanks. <laughs>